Well, the other, actually even larger project that we're involved with right now is called ALMA, which stands for the Atacama Large Millimeter Slash Submillimeter Array. And I'm glad we don't have to write that down too often. ALMA means soul in Spanish, but that was nice. Um, this is an artist's concept of one of the configurations of the array. ALMA will be at least 66 antennas, and there are many configurations. There are, um, the exact number always escapes me, but roughly 240 places, pads, where you can put telescopes, and there are about 66 telescopes. And on any given day, we expect that somewhere between two and four of the telescopes will move. So the ray is constantly changing. But again, the configuration of the array is an important factor that an astronomer uses to determine whether her or his science can be done with the array in that configuration. This little device right here is the transporter. There are two of those. Those are used to actually move the antennas from one position to another. You recall that the very large array is on these railroad tracks, almost not. There are pads, very accurately made pads for each of the antennas, uh, but they're not on a rail of any kind. This is another international partnership, and the partnership is North America, which we represent. We're the so-called North American executive of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. North America is paying 37.5% of the cost for ALMA. Then our European colleagues, represented by the European Organization for Research in the Southern Hemisphere, or ESO. ESO used to be the European Southern Observatory. And again, people spend too much time thinking about acronyms. They decided they didn't want to be there anymore, so they're still ESO, but that doesn't, ESO doesn't stand for European Southern Observatory anymore. It stands for European Observatory for Astronomical Research in the Southern Hemisphere. European Organization for Astronomical Research in the Southern And they always tell me, and I'll remember, there's an S in organization. Okay. That's what the Brits said. Well, exactly right. They use British English for, for their press uh, releases. How big are those dishes compared to the VLA? They are 12 meters in diameter. So the VLA are 25 meters in diameter. Most of them are 12. There are a small number that are smaller, but almost all of them are, are 12 meters in diameter. People thought long and hard about where to put ALMA because it's doing millimeter, submillimeter astronomy, which is tough really hard to do from the surface of the Earth, and you'll probably recognize this, recognize this as the Hubble Space Telescope. And here Hubble is looking down on the west coast of South America. So south is down here, north is up here. Antifagasta, which is a port in northern Chile, is near this little peninsula right there. And Alma is being built in here, inland a few hours. And Badenau, which is where the European very large telescopes are, is just is about right there. And there's lots of other astronomy going on there because these are the best astronomical sites that remain on the planet. And they're in Chile, and part of the good news is that Chile understands that and is very good stewards of these sites. They're actually uh, it's a wonderful place. And to do millimeter and submillimeter radio astronomy, you have to be really careful because the atmosphere is all right. It's never our friend, right? Certainly not our friend when we try to show fourth graders the Saturn. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's not being our friend tonight. But it's really nasty in the millimeter and the submillimeter. And any little bit of water in the atmosphere above you is problematic because it's very easy for the millimeter radiation that's come across all those millions of light years to get absorbed just above your head a little ways and not be seen. I shouldn't say it that way, should I? It sounds depressing that way, doesn't it? it sounds that, but, but we go very high, and we get to places where millimeter and submillimeter telescopes work quite well. They just have to be very dry, and they need to be very high. And in addition, for ALMA, we're not just building one telescope. We're building an array of telescopes. So we need high, dry, and pretty flat. And so that leads you, all those things together, to the Shock Nantor Plain in northern Chile the Atacama Desert. Very, very dry, high, and really relatively flat location that looks like that. This is an image taken from even higher mountains. That plain is where Alma is coming to life right now, 16,500 feet above sea level. <clears throat> the, uh, 
the industry in northern Chile, the largest industry, is mining. And, and a fair piece of the country is at moderately high elevation. So there is a workforce that is capable of dealing with this. But even for them, 16,500 feet is, of course, serious. And so there are very stringent constraints on what can be done at this elevation. But this is where the telescopes are going to be. This is where the correlator will be located. But ALMA has two fundamental sites in Chile. This one's called the Array Operations Site, or the AOS, 16,500 feet above sea level. But a lot of the work actually happens at lower elevations. This is one of my favorite photographs. I love the, the little gate right there. It would not take a rocket scientist to get around that baby, would it? <laughs> so, you know. The Chilean government and the Chilean people have basically given the project access to a sizable piece of their country to build and operate on them. And this is the entry point, and you drive up this road, which of course was built for the project, and here's the low elevation site called the OSF, or the Operations Support Facility. So most of the work gets done there. So most of the, the work in, in providing the telescopes to the external community, to astronomers from around the world, and dealing with the external world happens at the Operations Support Facility, which is 15 kilometers from this unprepossessing gate. And, uh, that doesn't look like a pleasant place to work. <laughs> it definitely needs an upgrade. And if you continue past the operations support facility, and you can sort of probably barely see the road there, and go over that pass and actually behind these hills here, you get to the high site, the array operations site, which is about, as you can see there, 43 kilometers from the entry gate. So that's all called the Alma Preserve. And this is an artist's concept of what the array will look like as it comes to life. The antennas are being built by three separate and very capable contractors, and they represent, of course, the single largest expense for the project. In the United States, a company called Vertex RSI, which is based in East Texas and Mejia, Texas, is building 25 of the antennas, and that is basically their design right there. Here you can see a couple of people. These telescopes are being built by a consortium in Europe led by Alcatel, which is a, a company based in France. And then in the back here are set the Japanese contribution to the telescope. It's called the Atacama Compact Array, uh, which is designed to look at the broad distribution of material in the sky. And those telescopes are being built by a consortium led by Mitsubishi. And the, the consortium is called Melco. And right here, you again see the transporter, which is a responsibility of our European colleagues. And there are antennas in Chile. It's coming to life. The first antenna was delivered by Vertex last April, April of 2007. And there are now, I believe, four Vertex antennas in Chile. The initial end, the production goes kind of slow, right? You're working everything out. Uh, before too terribly long, though, they'll be turning out antennas once, about one every couple of months. These are the first three Japanese antennas, which are in Chile now, being tested. Um, and this is just a very nice image of the Vertex antenna, uh, a recent image. It, it's got a nice mood to it, although when I show this image, some of the astronomers get unhappy because I have clouds. <laughs> but it's a, it's a nice image. This is the transporter, which exists now, too. There'll be two of these. Um, it can move pretty fast if there's no antenna on it. It can go something like 30 miles per hour. It goes, of course, quite slow if it has an antenna on it. So here, again, are people, the transporter, and one of the European antennas in an artist's concept. And here's the real thing uh, being tested in Germany in September of 2007. And pretty soon, probably April, uh, these real transporters will lift antennas for the first time in Chile, which is another really important milestone. 